I just jump in there and bring us on. Hello, folks. This is Ronnie Millsap spending this week with our host, that genial guy himself, <laughs> Guy himself. No, Ralph Emery. Go, Take it away, Ralph. You go off on that tangent every time you come up here. <laughs> How you doing, Ronnie? Fine, Ralph. Good to be with you. All right. This is old Guy himself, <laughs> Ralph Emery, and we're on the air for Ford Trucks, which you'll find at your local Ford dealers and for Bayer Aspirin, which you'll find at about any drugstore in America. Indeed. And Ronnie, uh, since uh, since you started things, how about bringing on the next song? Okay, let me do that. Uh, fantastic young lady, Dolly Parton, with her big record, Here You Come Again. Here you come again Just when I've begun to get myself together You waltz right in the door Just like you've done before And wrap my heart round your little Just when I'm about to make it work without you You look into my eyes and lie those pretty lies And pretty soon I'm wondering how I came to doubt you All you gotta do is smile and smile And therefore my defenses Just leave it up to you and in a little while You're messing up my mind You a fan of hers? Yes, indeed. Now, you get all of her records free, don't you? But yeah, she's on yeah. the same label. Yeah, I, you know, she gets a new album out, and I go down, and I hear all about it, and I go down and listen to it, and uh, they will they will give me one at the record company. Bless them. They get, surely will. Get your Whalen records free. Yes, sir. Now you can get your Tom T. Hall records That's free. true. <laughs> They're on all, all on RCA. That's right. You've heard Dolly with Here You Come Again. Here's Merle Haggard for tough new Ford pickups. Hey, pickup driving man, are you in love? Ford's got your kind of a real tough truck. It's a strong running, long running, smooth as a song running pickup with a proud Ford brand. Made tough with the pickup driving man. Right, Merle, and the new 78 Ford four-wheelers are tough all over. Take the new F-250 4x4. It's called a three-quarter tonner, but it's top load rated at over 3,600 pounds. Ford's new super cab four-wheelers give you extra room inside. There's even a shorty flare side 4x4. For a four-wheeler that's tough all over, see your Ford dealer. Pick up with a proud Ford brand. Made tough for the pickup driving man. My guest is Ronnie Millsap. There's a lot of interest in Ronnie Millsap around the country. Ronnie, there's a story about you in uh, a new issue of one of the leading country music magazines. You, do you mind if I ask you some personal questions? No, sir. I don't even know what's in this magazine. I know you don't. <laughs> but they, they have brought out some things about you I, I uh, was not aware of. Okay. 
Uh, probably some that I'm not aware of myself. Well, they point out that you were born blind, is that correct? Right. And uh, that They're right you, so far. And uh, that you were abandoned by your parents. That's is, true. Is that a, a true statement? Yes. At the age of five. Well, Ralph, let me say that, you know, don't believe all you see in print. It's not quite exactly that way. Well, but was, that's the reason uh, I wanted to yeah, get your comments yeah, on this. Yeah. I was, uh, I grew up with my grandparents uh, because I was victim of uh, of broken home like uh, like so many, uh, you know, so many children nowadays. And uh, <clears throat> there's not an awful lot to tell except that uh, my, my mother and uh, father, my father was around, but my mother wasn't. And uh, I grew up with my grandfather, Homer Frisbee, and uh, my grandmother over in uh, the mountains of western North Carolina. And uh, I... I saw my mother a few times while I was in uh, in school at the Governor Moorhead School in Raleigh, but uh, really I, I felt a lot more like my grandparents were were my were my parents really. Let me ask you this: mm -hmm. in uh, the school for the blind, I, I assume that they start with kindergarten. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just like any regular school. <clears throat> right. It's just a different approach to teaching. Right. The uh, we were in kindergarten. Uh, through high school, and I started in that school when I was uh, six, and uh, <clears throat> we started uh, learning uh, Braille. The the first week we were there, uh, they were teaching us the Braille alphabet and uh, and how to read and uh, some simple simple math and spelling. I, I I can remember learning a lot in kindergarten. By the time I got to first grade, I feel like probably I had learned what a lot of a lot of children now learn in the in the first and second grades. Uh, we were a little more prepared. Uh, in the earlier grades, I can remember at the school, than I feel like children are today. We seem to learn more, uh, more math and more spelling and uh, and more reading. There was a lot of emphasis on those things in, in the school, and uh, I notice a lot of the children going to school today uh, don't learn that much in first and second grade. It's you know a lot of it's a lot of a it seems to be uh, an atmosphere more for play rather than for learning. But uh -huh. uh, it was uh, it was very much a learning atmosphere in that school. I, I may have another question or two about this, yeah. but I want to change the subject okay. here. From your hit album, the album of the year, I thought we would play the big song, Let My Love oh, Be great, Your Pillow. Oh, great, great. And at the, at the time we did this album, at the Opry House, we did it in August of 1976. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, did you have any idea that Let My Love Be Your Pillow was going to be the single? Well, not really. It was between this and uh, a song that had been uh, <clears throat> recorded by a few other folks. Uh, I can almost see Houston from here. We had hoped that these songs would come off good enough, you know, that there may be single possibilities. But you don't really ever know, Ralph, until it's all through. And it's, uh, you can sit back and listen to the final tapes and say, well, you know, that's, that's, that's okay. And this is a little better than this, you know. It's hard to plan something going in and say, well, let's cut this as a single. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we go to this song? As it oh, turns okay. out, it turned out to be another big record for you. When you need a good friend, well, here I am. And if you have a problem, I'll be your helping hand. And if you have a bad day, I'll make you a good
our guest Ronnie Millsap and all the crowd is yelling, applauding, and, and having a whale of a time there at the Grand Ole Opry House as Ronnie was singing from his live album, the album of the year, the song Let My Love Be Your Pillow. Now, for The Working Man, a song by Johnny P on the country music stars that come on my shows. Well, I'm not giving away any secrets when I tell you I read the Music City News. Music City News is one of the most exciting newspapers I've ever read. Where else can you find the very latest news in country music and bluegrass, along with all the information you'll ever need about fan clubs, new albums, and hit singles? Music City News is just loaded with stories and pictures from the lives of all your biggest country stars. Stars like Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton, Lynn Anderson, Merle Haggard, Loretta Lynn, and many, many more. Reading Music City News is like having a monthly talk with the stars themselves. You can be a subscriber to Music City News yourself. All you have to do is send a check or money order for $8 to Music City News, Box 8, Nashville, Tennessee, 37202. That's Music City News, Box 8, Nashville, Tennessee, 37202. Ronnie Millsap is sitting with me. I, I wanted to ask you, Ronnie, if you're going to record another live album, particularly since that one was so successful. I would love to. We, uh, we don't know where or when, but I hope this year we can uh, take maybe one of the sound trucks and uh, it was fully equipped studio on the road and, uh, and do a, a live recording again. I, I, as, as you might know, I love live performing better than any part of the, uh, of the performing part because it's so better than uh, recording in studio where you don't really have that many you don't have a crowd and you, you can't feel the electricity I, do, I love live work we're going to do it again yeah great i well i can look forward to that you certainly can i'll make i will call you <laughs> oh will you please yes i will honolulu would be nice <laughs> wouldn't it <they? laughs> <laughs> could we do it live from honolulu that'd be, that'd be great <laughs> or uh, bermuda jamaica yes all right <laughs> here is pretty donna fargo shadow of a doubt as the mighty river flows as the meadow gently plays with the wind on summer days about as deep as deep can go from the canyons to the sky like a mother as she cares for the baby that she bears. Do I love you? Don't you know by now? Do I love you? Must I show you how? Do I love you? Do I have to say? From a whisper to a roar Very much and even more Let me show it with my eyes And I'll share it with the night And if in death the Lord is kind You'll be the last thing on my
That song, but Donna, a real pretty song called Do I Love You? Yes, I Do. Latin Scrubs performing just one of 30 original bluegrass hits in 30 Years of Bluegrass. Listen to what you get. The Stanley Brothers. Benny Martin. Thirty years of bluegrass can be yours today by mail only. The two record set is only five ninety nine. Eight track tape only seven ninety nine. Order yours now. To get your copy of Thirty Years of Bluegrass, send your check or money order today for five ninety nine for the album set or seven ninety nine for the eight track tape to Bluegrass Box Eight, Nashville, Tennessee thirty seven two zero two. That's Bluegrass, Box 8, Nashville, Tennessee, 37202. Way back in 1918, people knew to relieve the aches and fever of colds and flu, get rest, drink fluids, and take Bayer Aspirin. In the 40s, it was rest, fluids, Bayer Aspirin. And today, it's still rest, fluids, and Bayer Aspirin. Times have changed, but one thing hasn't. Generations of doctors have recommended rest, fluids, aspirin. And the number one aspirin is and always has been Bayer. Use only as directed. All right, Ronnie, take it away. Well, let me see uh, if I have a sheet over here with this written on it somewhere. Oh, that's your, your crackers. Well, that's, well, here's no, the music oh, here's sheet, the, right? Oh, yeah, here it is. There's the music More light, sheet. please. The, these guys, we worked with them a lot, and they're really fantastic to work with. And a very exciting group, the Oaks, and a brand new record called You're the One. Man is the time I have looked in the water and had no reflection to show. to them none they'd expect me to The Oaks is introduced by Ronnie Millsap. Sing, You're the One. You're listening to the Ralph Emery Show, and it is our pleasure to have the Entertainer of the Year, Ronnie Millsap, as our guest. 
Ronnie, uh, your comments, please, about I'm a stand by my woman man. I'm a stand by my woman man. Uh, <clears throat> Ed was, uh, we recorded, there was a song about, out about the middle of 1976, Ralph, and it was another in a series of uh, up tempo, positive uh, uh, songs that reflect um, really my, what my lifestyle is all about. The uh, song was written by uh, Kent Robbins, who has written other things for me. Uh, one, uh, After Sweet Memories Play Born to Lose Again. And, uh, and this song, I'm a Stand by My Woman Man, was one of the biggest records I've ever had. At five o'clock she knows I'll soon be home. She don't worry about me running around. Cause all of my good times are waiting right there for me And she knows where I'll be when the sun goes down Beside her, cause I'm not just her lover, I'm her friend. Our love keeps getting better, and I'll gladly spend forever standing by the woman who stands by her man. Guest Ronnie Millsap, can you hear? Can you hear uh, Mo Bandy doing that? I'm a stand by my woman. <laughs> woman, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Millsap with I'm a stand by my woman, man. Ronnie, on our music sheet, we have Gary Stewart set here to uh, sing quits. Now, I know you used to work with Gary a lot. Oh, yeah. I don't see him nearly enough anymore uh, since we were parts of the uh, Charlie Pride show. <clears throat> but uh, he's, he's one of my favorite people, uh, and uh, he's certainly a fantastic singer. has one of the greatest ranges of uh, all country singers. He is probably the most laid-back <laughs> individual I've ever met. <laughs> He makes Waylon look nervous. <laughs> makes Willie look nervous. He, uh, he, uh, I know, is a part of that Charlie Pride Alumni Association. Oh, yeah. You and uh, Johnny Duncan. And Johnny Russell and Dave and Sugar. And Diamond. Yeah, he's, he likes honky-tonkin' music. And uh, we did a show with him one time out the Troubadour in, uh, in Los Angeles. And uh, he just... He, like you said, he's just, he's really gets down. He told us he'd rather sing in a honky-tonk than anywhere else. When he was on the show, he mentioned that. 
So apparently that's that's where he feels at home. Right. You've heard Gary Stewart and quits. Every year, more people around here are getting four-wheel drive pickups. And this year, you've got more reasons than ever to make it a Ford four-wheeler. Ford gives you some great four-wheel choices for 78. For example, for the first time, you can get a four-wheel drive with Ford Super Cab pickups. It'll take the whole family anywhere. Ford four-wheelers offer a choice of a big standard six or optional big cube V8s. And except in California, all Ford 4x4 engines run on any kind of gas. And that can be mighty important. And there's no compromise on optional equipment to tailor your Ford four-wheeler to your needs. For 78, Ford offers everything from heavy-duty towing packages to quad front shocks. And there's no compromise on the kind of four-wheel drive you want. When you order V8 Automatic, you can choose full-time four-wheel drive or part-time four-wheel drive with free-running front hubs. See the four-wheelers at your Ford dealers and write your own ticket. Ronnie, I want to go back to Charlie Pride. I know uh, Charlie is very proud of your accomplishments and the fact that you came out of his show. Did he ever offer you any show business advice? Well, he, uh, he was always you know, encouraging to the point because up, up until working his show, Ralph, all I'd really played was uh, a lot of nightclubs, uh, situations in rooms for about two or three hundred people, and all of a sudden he's uh, playing to 10,000 people. So I, that was a, a big change in that my life. Did that scare you a little it bit? It really did. I remember the first night I worked with him in, uh, in uh, Roanoke, Virginia, um, back in 1973, right toward the end of that year, and uh, I was scared to death. And uh, But he... He, uh, he was very encouraging about it. He uh, spent more time just trying to encourage me to just go out and feel at home, you know, and relax. And, uh, of course, it was hard to relax you know, to me at that, at that time, uh, uh, playing for that many people. But uh, he's, uh, he's been a real friend. Would you say that your exposure on the Charlie Pride show uh, aided your career? Oh, by all means. Uh, if I hadn't had that exposure, I'm sure that it would have probably taken me a couple of years to do what I did with him, probably in six months. Uh, all the people uh, I had a chance to, to play for by being part of his show. Well, I'm going to get off of that and go on to another song. Okay, Ralph. Here's Lynn Anderson. <laughs> we believe in making magic. It's the only thing to do. And I just could not imagine... Making magic without you When I know that I'm just finding out from you Everything I need to know To keep your magic coming through We're superstitious children All wrapped up inside a feeling a feeling that forever and ever and ever I know we'll be believing
Glenn Anderson singing We Got Love. In the uh, article that is out about you in Country Style magazine, <laughs> there is an interesting comment. Uh, they, they quote you at the end uh -oh. of the article. And uh, uh, it says, Ronnie once remarked, I'm almost glad I was born blind. If I had the gift of sight, I might have wound up in a North Carolina sawmill. Do you say that? That is very, I must admit, uh, uh, said out of text <laughs> and said all wrong. You mean a writer took some liberties? As, yeah, as, as most writers do. Uh, they will write it the way they hear it and the way they want to write it. And uh, But as it was said, was that uh, if, uh, if I hadn't... Uh, if I had been born with sight, uh, possibly, certainly, I wouldn't have had a chance to participate in the music that I do today. And I might have been uh, there in the environment that I was in western North Carolina, working in a sawmill or working, uh, doing anything. Not that any of that is, uh, is wrong or any of it is, uh, is bad, but I certainly wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. And that's really how I said it. Well, you, you might have <coughs> just picked up a guitar anyway. Yeah, I probably would have. Yeah. I've been singing of what I was singing in mostly uh, church, gospel songs, and, uh, and country songs. I've probably done that anyway. Well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> Rex Allen, Jr., tall, good-looking fellow with a great voice, is about to join us to sing Lonely Street. I'm looking for that lonely street I've got a sad, sad tale to tell I need a place to go and weep Where's this place called Lonely Street? Place where there's just loneliness, where dim lights bring forgetfulness, where broken dreams and memory meet. Where's this place called Lonely Street? Perhaps upon that lonely street There's someone such as I find that lonely street where dim lights bring forgetfulness where broken dreams and memories meet where's this place called That's Rex Allen, Jr. What is his nickname? I've forgotten. I didn't know his nickname. Well, all right, I'll think of it. Rex Allen, Jr. with Lonely Street. Way back in 1918, people knew to relieve the aches and fever of colds and flu, get rest, drink fluids, and take Bayer Aspirin. In the 40s, it was rest, fluids, Bayer Aspirin. And today, it's still rest, fluids, and Bayer Aspirin. 
Times have changed, but one thing hasn't. Generations of doctors have recommended rest, fluids, aspirin. And the number one aspirin is and always has been Bayer. Use only as directed. My guest is Ronnie Millsap. Ronnie, have you got a nickname? Oh, my goodness. I guess I've been called a lot of things. Uh, can't think of one that really stuck. Uh, I wondered when you were coming up <laughs> if uh, they stuck some little old nickname on you. Oh, I can remember being called. Uh, oh, my goodness. I can remember a lot of nicknames where I went to school. None of them come to mind at the moment. Uh, Anybody ever call you Lee? Yeah. Uh, it's Ronald Lee Millsap, that, isn't it? That's true. That, that's it. Uh, that's a good question. I, I I do remember a bunch of nicknames, and none come to to mind at I, the moment. I but think probably you don't want to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like everybody at the school had nicknames for everybody. I remember that. Ronnie, I, what do you remember about what goes on when the sun goes down? What goes on when the sun goes down? It was written by John Swears from uh, San Antonio, Texas, who's written uh, a lot of hit songs for me. And uh, this song... Uh, he wrote Daydreams About Night Things, and then we had a song called Just In Case, and Daydreams About Night Things was such a good record, I said, hey, John, let's get together and let's, you know, I want another one of those. Uh, that was such a good record. Let's, so he wrote this song, and uh, the, uh, we did some rewriting and changing and put the thing together. Originally, it was uh, What Goes On When The Sun Goes Down uh, uh, about the... Uh, cotton gowns, cotton gowns, and it was originally silk gowns, I think it was. Anyway, there was, there was a bunch of changes on it before we finally uh, rewrote it and came out to, with, and it was a big record, early part of 1976. Sometimes love can sure get lost in the daytime And working late long hours You're only a picture found and only lovers know what goes on when the sun goes down what goes on Sap with what goes on when the sun goes down.
Well, Ronnie, it's time for us to bail out for a little while. That's the end of another day. These days go by so quickly with you, Ralph. When you're having fun, right? <laughs> yes, they do. Ronnie, I thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I'll see you tomorrow. Mighty fine. Our show presented by Ford, the makers of those dependable Ford trucks, and by Bayer Aspirin. This is Ralph Emery thanking you for listening.